A few weeks ago, myself and the rest of the team here on the channel headed to the Portland International Raceway for the Arkimoto FUV and Friends event. We got to try out some great new vehicles, including the Roadsters for the very first time. You can see the video about that right here. Winter also got to drive a very special prototype, which included torque vectoring, which made the Arkimoto FUV so much easier to ride. And surprise, surprise, the technology behind that vehicle is going to be rolled out as a software update to every Arkimoto FUV and every Roadster that's been made to date at some point in the near future. But while we were there, we also got to chat to some of our friends in the EV world. And one of the most anticipated things that we've promised you for some time is an interview, a particular interview with a certain man who's very well known for taking EVs apart. Here at Portland International Raceway, I have the legend that is Sandy Munro. Thank you for talking to me, Sandy. Thank you. You, you, you have a, an incredible following in the EV industry because of your legendary uh, takings apart. <laughs> you know, if I could have made a career aged eight taking things apart, I would have been very, very happy because that's what I used to do. My parents said I always used to take things apart, didn't necessarily always put them back together again. Well, we never put them back together. <laughs> Once they come apart at our place, that's it. They're done. Yeah. Now, Monroe and Associates have been working with Arkimoto now for two years. A uh, year and a bit. And it's, I suspect, unlike anything that you've ever worked on or worked with before in the industry. We've worked on lots of different vehicles and whatnot, but we've never worked on a three-wheel vehicle before. This was the first one. Um, and now... We seem to be the king of three wheels, so um, so it's uh, it's it's kind of turned into a, a different type of a, a different type of an experience for us. So yeah, you've been working with uh, Aptera as well, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, I didn't see him, but I think Chris and Steve were here somewhere. Oh, I didn't but, see them. Uh, no, I'll have to yeah. keep my eyes out for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're supposed to be here. Let's talk about this. This is yeah. a very revolutionary vehicle. Yes. From a very unusual place, Arkimoto seem to have broken the rule books. And yet they've managed to create something that is fun and compelling. Earlier on, you were on stage and you talked about the first time you got behind the steering bars. Yeah. Tell us about that experience. Were you, were you anticipating it to be as good as it was? Well, I, what happened was um, one of the other bloggers had uh, recommended that I, uh, that I um, uh, talk to the guys at Arkimoto. <clears throat> and I'd never heard of them. So I took that and I... Um, his name is um, uh, Galley. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, uh, Galley told me to do this, and I did. I phoned him up, and I said, uh, heard that, uh, that you've got a three-wheel vehicle, and uh, Galley told me all about it. And uh, So, Mark, what, what are you looking for? And he says, I want you to drive my vehicle. I said, uh, okay, fine. So he sent it down. And so my guys had driven it a little bit. They said, hey, Sandy, you're going to have to go out and try this thing. I came out, and I looked at it, and I walked around it, and I had plenty of bikes in the past. They were all ice bikes. But anyways, um, I looked at it and I said, okay, well, how do you make it go? They showed me, you know, push this, twist that, whatever. So anyways, I, I got out and I said, well, I'll go around the block. So I was out, I think for about 20 minutes. Everybody thought I'd had a wreck or something, <laughs> but, uh, but really what I was having was fun. And I zipped around a little bit and I thought, you know, this is pretty good. Except I, I didn't like the steering was a little rough, but anyways, I thought it was pretty good, and I drove into the parking lot with a big grin on my face. And uh, Corey, Corey Steuben, our president, um, he says, oh, you, you got to do that again. This time we'll catch it on tape. I said, fine. So I did a donut basically in the parking lot, came back up, and uh, I came up and I stopped. And Corey said, well, what did you think? I said, you know, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I think everybody should go out and buy one of these. <laughs> Okay, so it turned into kind of like a little bit of an endorsement because ah, that was my first impression and it hasn't really changed. In fact, well, it's not here, but that blue one, I don't know where it went, but with that torque vectoring, <clears throat> I'm in all day long. So that's they, a they've, really. They've, they've figured out a way because the front steering on these is, is pretty tough. There's yeah. no power assistance. Oh, no, no, there is. There is. And it's useless. Oh, not useless, but it's very difficult. You're not going to. You're not going to make that thing move uh, unless you got it rolling a little bit. So it's dry, dry steering it's is almost impossible. It's almost, yeah. Yeah. So with this, 
Holy mackerel, what a huge difference. I mean, it's incredible how agile and nimble. For some reason or other, this is faster than the one we've got. It's faster <laughs> and it's quicker. I mean, when you touch the throttle, boom, it starts to go. It's, I, I don't know, I think it's just marvelous. I really do. I really think this is uh, the game changer we were looking for. And we can get rid of the, uh, the electric uh, power steering system, which is going to make it lighter. Anytime I can make it lighter, I can make the batteries last longer, on and on and on. And I don't have the controls and whatnot anymore. And it's for that, to and make. it's less money. Yeah. So this has got two motors at the front, which is one yes. reason they were ab so easily able to do yes. this torque steering, right. as I understand yes. it. Exactly. Um, because you can drive one backwards at stop and one forwards to give right. you that, yeah. that that steering motion. Right. So if you're driving this and you're going into a curb, and you um, and you're throttling up or throttling back, and you move the steering wheel, that means that the inboard wheel is going a little slower than the yeah. outboard wheel. And that is what I wanted to test when I was going around the track. So initially, having it move on the parking lot, okay, that's great. But I was one of the guys in the company that I could make it happen. But I didn't like was, I mean, when you come around the corner with a normal three-wheel vehicle, um, the wheels are running at the same speed, yep. so you're getting hopping, right? Yeah. This one doesn't hop anymore. Do you think it's going to be less likely to want to lift lift a leg? Because I've managed to get an Akimoto a couple of times. If you're a bit a bit stiff on the steering, you can actually well, get it to cock yeah. a leg a little. If you if you jerk it, yeah, you could probably pop it up, but not with this. Because if you jerk it, boom, this wheel's instantly going slower. That one's yeah. actually going faster. So lift off is going to be very very difficult. And then if they can combine it with the um, with the uh, tilt steering that's going on over there. Yeah. Ha -ha. That's gonna now be we got a crotch rocket. I think it'd be really fabulous. So tell me about, because these guys seem to be drawing down the number of components in their vehicles yeah. and maximizing the, the, the effect and the benefit of each of those components. That's what, that's what Archimoto hired us to help them do, was to, to get rid of parts. And that's what makes them different and unique. Most of the companies we work with, especially the startups, what they think is that somehow even if they're only their first kick at the cat, somehow they, they think that they're going to be able to uh, uh, invent something new that's going to make their lives and everybody else's life easier. But as a rule, normally what happens is they create old problems. Archimoto phoned up and said, hey, um, we need help. We want you to help us. And, um, and we're, we're willing and ready, willing, and able to listen. And so far, our, uh, our working together has been phenomenal. I'm very happy to work with Archimoto. They're easy to deal with. They're not um, stuck on things that that uh, they've done themselves. And so we we call that uh, when we have a customer doing that kind of stuff, we call it the ugly baby syndrome. <laughs> and uh, these guys don't seem to have that. They're happy to the homology of parts between. They're using, I'm guessing, parts that are a really working hard in the vehicle rather than going we've designed this new unique part that nobody else is going to know how to make and we're going to have to get a special yeah. custom fabrication unit to yeah. spend thousands of dollars well it's more than that okay so right now if you look at that it's all um it's cut bend weld and really and truly when you want to get into high production like a hundred thousand vehicles or more that is going to kill you you'll never get out fast enough and, and your costs are going to be to the moon right so your tooling cost is low, but your part cost is astronomical. What Monroe is helping um, Archimoto do is to reduce the cost of the parts. So there will be some investment that they're gonna have to make, but at the end of the day, when they make the investments and they start cranking that vehicle, the price will go down, they'll be able to, try, they'll be able to make more money, and, um, and the customer is gonna be a lot more satisfied because in all things like that, where, where you're hand building them basically, they're off a little bit. Uh, I used to work for Bentley and Rolls Royce. And before we got in, everything was a handmade part. Yep. Handmade means inconsistent. Inconsistent means the quality goes down. And with Bentley and Rolls Royce, it was very difficult to, to crank a car out. It took forever. Now, um, Volkswagen owns Bentley and, uh, and be a, uh, BMW owns uh, yep. Rolls Royce, and they can push them out the door like there's no tomorrow because they still got all the quality features, they still got all the style and styling and everything, but what they've got is a product that people can actually afford, and it's a very high quality, and that's what we're 
we're doing with Archimoto, helping him out there. Do you think <clears throat> there are many companies in the industry that are doing, I mean, we, are, we know that Tesla is, is continuously uh, evolving and continuously refining its technology right. and, and rethinking things out of the box. It sounds as though you think Archimoto is, is in that same kind of thinking out of the box and doing things differently so that they are functional rather than fancy? Well, functional and fancy is what I see here. Right. I mean, the styling is still great. Um, with, with Archimoto and with Tesla, what you're looking at is people who are not afraid to make a change. And um, and they really don't care if um, they really don't care if uh, if the model today isn't the same as the model tomorrow. They don't care. What they're really interested in is how do I improve every day? So manufacturing improvement is something lots of people do. They go on the floor, they find a new tool that they can use or a better way to put something together. But what these guys are doing is they're figuring out how to. Um, how to design the product so that there's less parts. I don't want to buy a tool to put something on. If I can somehow combine compo componentry, maybe using right. a casting or a plastic injection molding, doing that so I don't have to buy another tool. And that's yeah. what they're doing. And they, they don't seem to have the same kind of arrogance or pride <laughs> that you find with the normal OEMs who say, well, we can't do that. We got to send it to the change board. Two years later, it's still not in. Do you think OEMs are in trouble because of the way that they've designed cars in the past. They, they're going to have to relearn how to make these cars no, for the new age. They, they know how to make cars for the new age, if you like. But the big problem is, is that now they've, they've been sitting on their hands too long. And so now what you've got is, um, is a, a brand new world with electric vehicles. And unfortunately, uh, they're still trying to figure out how to make gas engines more efficient. So I think that really and truly what you've got is a situation where the Chinese are going to show up yeah. and they're going to eat some of the marketplace. And then you're going to a whole bunch of startups like Archimoto and Tesla and on and on. They're going to eat into the marketplace. So you're going to see the, uh, the OEMs shrinking, just like what happened when the Japanese came into the marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to happen again. So they'll shrink and other guys will grow. This doesn't feel like an American vehicle. I've been talking to people today who think that this is going to have great worldwide appeal. Um, do you think that vehicles like this can really catch on in America? I think this is a kind of a vehicle that you're going to see in, um, um, in North America. I believe that Canada, United States and Mexico, I see a lot of that. I see even more if you start looking at Brazil, Chile, Argentina, um, the, the richer, if you like, of the uh, South American countries, I think you're going to see that too. I believe that this could sell in Europe, but it's hard to tackle a European market because um, Europeans like to buy European. But I also think that this is a good, a good opportunity for selling in India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Africa, all over the place in Africa. I see this as being a really good deal. This is the kind of vehicle that the um, 10 and 12 year olds. I mean, we were watching some kids here that are maybe six or eight years old and they just absolutely love this vehicle. Yep. That's where you're going to see yep. this thing hangs on five years that 15 or sorry, that uh, 12 year old is yep. going to be 16 and guess or 17 and guess what he's going to want or yep. she's going to want. Yep. They're going to want one of these. I've driven, I've driven one of these down a freeway, uh, down, down I-5 before. You get more looks in this than you do in a, you know, $100,000 Tesla. Because <laughs> everyone just goes, yeah, wow, what wow. is that? I want Especially it. Especially if it looks like that thing. I mean, yeah. you know, that the was turquoise. That, was and, that one, actually. Oh, really? Oh, ah, well, there you are. Yeah, it was that that very, one's that definitely going to catch your eye. But I think, I think that it's going to be more than that because kids nowadays, they are concerned about the, uh, the climate. They are concerned about, you know, what's going to happen in the future and where are these resources going and whatnot. And I, I think, I think that probably the the, uh, the the program management guys, the guys that are sitting at the OEMs trying to develop whatever the next car is, they're forgetting that things are going to change in five years. Thank you so much. Oh, for, you're welcome. For, uh, Thank you for joining us. Thanks very uh, much. Make sure that you subscribe to Sandy's channel. Sandy makes it easy for everyone to understand. Yeah. Why I like watching your stuff because you tell yeah. people what's happening, but then you also tell people 
why it's interesting. I think one of your one of the the most interesting videos I've I've watched from you recently was the uh, teardown of the um, the cheap Chinese EV that Jason oh, yeah. Jasinski yeah. uh, purchased. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you really enjoyed that one. I did. I had a lot of fun with that. I uh, I actually did a donut inside the plant. So uh, that or did a not a donut really, but just made a circle inside the plant. It was so. Uh, it made you laugh. I mean, yeah. and, and I've already talked to two or three people here at the show, and uh, and and they're going to buy one and bring it in. So we've we've been we've been talking off camera, our team, about maybe buying a a cheap Chinese vehicle and doing fun things. I'm with telling it. you what, you go to Alibaba, buy it, and they'll ship it to you. It'll all be showing up at your back door. You don't have to do a damn thing <laughs> except pull it out of the wooden box. That's it for today's video. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our other two channels, Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. We know that many of you are already subscribed to all of our channels, but the majority aren't. So please help us grow our subscriber numbers and hit those bells. Let us know below what you thought of the video. And if you're not someone who likes the comment section, then just take it over to our Discord server. We even have a special three wheel vehicle segment just for discussing videos like this. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, that's David Janikula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tesla Inagong, Paul Conway, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Ray Jean Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Ellery, Hennersley and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, then you can do so by using one of the links below, which will take you to Patreon, Bitcoin or Kofi. And of course, you can also do so by buying your very own TE swag like this shirt at our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.